wish I could help you out somehow. Hey, I could use a bright girl. I mean, somebody that, that knows the business. You could? Oh, okay. uh, nothing up front where you meet the customers. You know, oh. something in the back, uh, taking inventory, bookkeeping, that sort of thing. You know what I mean? Mm. And who knows, maybe one of these days, uh, you and I, we might... Yes, Herman? Five minutes, Miriam. I better get to my seat. <laughs> Herman? Yeah? How about a kiss for luck? <laughs> I loved her from the moment I saw her. She's the most beautiful woman in the world. I'm so glad you brought her home for us to meet. But not for your approval, Mother, but for your enrichment, as I have been enriched. George, what a lovely house and garden. Oh, this must be your mother. How do you do, Mrs. Wainwright? How do you do, my dear? George has told me such wonderful things about you. Place those alongside the wonderful things he said about you. My, my. I feel as if I've known you all my life. I'm so glad. This is Miriam terrific. The audience accepted her immediately. Wainwright, but I'm due at the front. She'll be even more no terrific in the next act. This box represents my heart. Empty. <laughs> and empty also are our lives. <laughs> Empty also are our lives. <laughs> for that humiliation. She made me look like a fool. Not only in front of half the student body, but in front of Herman. I wanted to get away from everything, everyone, as fast as possible, and never come back. Never, never, never come back. The entire time I was in the hospital, I was haunted by scenes from college. Moose, Dr. Ted Gates, Freddie, and especially Heidi, all laughing at me. Any kind of a normal life with a husband and children seemed out of the question for me. After all, who'd want to make love to a mummy, except a drunken Egyptian? Gosh, I was depressed. Oh, you have a visitor, Miriam. A very nice-looking young man. Can I let him in? Mm. Dr. Silverman. You make him in now, sir. Ah, uh, thank you, nurse. Hey, Miriam. <laughs> yeah, I brought you some some candy for uh, for uh, for your. Uh, 
Uh, I uh, tried to get here sooner, but I was too busy. Hey, you know, for somebody who tried to kill himself, uh, you look terrific. Yeah, that, that was what happened in the car, wasn't it? Well, when they when they called, I said, uh, I said, Miriam tried to knock herself off. Ridiculous. She's probably uh, just fooling around like old times, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> hey, let me give you a hand with that. Huh? There you go, right there. I guess what happened on the stage was the reason for your, uh, well, you know what it did, huh? <laughs> but uh, don't feel bad. I mean, you were just miscast. They should have gotten somebody uh, good-looking, like Elizabeth Taylor. Miriam, good always comes out of bad. I didn't realize until the accident uh, how much you mean to me. I mean, we've known each other all our lives, and I think it's time... I told you what was in my heart. Hmm. Hmm. Miriam, give up. You've got to realize that you're a very plain girl, and you've got to accept that once and for all. You know what I mean? <laughs> I got something very interesting to tell you. Miriam, I'm getting married. <laughs> I met this girl at a plumber's convention. Yeah, and it's our plan that we're going to tie the knot in the next four weeks. Yeah. Oh, you're going to love her. She's beautiful, talented, and a terrific little bowler. Terrific. I know that uh, our parents always hope that someday that we get married, but uh, we both realize how ridiculous that is, right? <laughs> but anyway, we want you to be our maid of honor. That's if you can ever walk again, you know? <laughs> well, I better get going. It was uh, great watching you drink your supper. And uh, sometime I'll come back and uh, maybe watch you drink something else. Oh, uh, I better take these. There's no way you're going to get these in there. <laughs> Ciao. Oh. Ah. Oh, yes, yes. You look like a very fine job, Dr. Hankin. She's healed beautifully. In fact, Doctor, I've never seen such fantastic plastic surgery in my life. Good morning, beautiful. Uh, listen, Miriam, if you're not busy this evening... <laughs> Miriam, take a look. Okay. When do I turn back into a pumpkin? What's the catch? There's no catch. When can I try it out? Be our guest. Dr. It's really something all dressed, huh? Hey, come on. adjustment you'll have to make. Goodbye, Miriam. Be happy. Be happy, Miriam. It was easy enough for them to say, be happy. But how could I, the new Miriam, be happy when I knew there were still so many other Miriams out there, suffering needlessly like I had? Popularity now seemed so easy, so accessible. But I had reached a turning point in my life. When I thought about all the unhappiness I had gone through, I was determined to pay it back with interest. Dr. Gates, Dr. Ted Gates, 
Call 125. Bolin. I've been assigned to assist you. Great. Meet me at my place at 7. Oh, no, I mean at the hospital. Fine. Follow me and we'll find a secluded shelf in the linen closet as soon as I'm out of surgery. Uh -huh. <laughs> I always like to get to know all the new nurses on a personal basis. Don't you think you might go after the wrong woman one day and hurry her? Impossible. I'll be doing them all a favor. Not the gates, please. Now you just scrub. You're supposed to be sterile. Oh no, the patient is asleep. This is against all regulations. Ah! Ah! What did you do? I told you one day you'd go after the wrong woman. Oh, I'll be out cold in a minute. That's right. Oh, no, if I lie here, they'll, they'll take me into the operating room. What's wrong with that? You took me in there once. Only then, you were the operator. Now, I guess you'll be the operatee. I don't understand. I'm Miriam Knight. Remember? Oh. That's next! Have somebody else fill out the death certificate. What? Oh, this is the emergency appendectomy. That's it? right, Doctor. That's funny, he looks a lot younger than when I examined him. Well, let's get to work. his appendix. The man has got appendicitis. He's got no appendix. He was there an hour ago. Doctor, the patient's getting shocky. That's not possible. We just began surgery. Blood pressure is dropping. What is it? 60 over 20. That's dropping. Well, what's the pulse? Going up. 140. Well, I'll get some plasma in here on this. Up. Right away, doctor. See anything in there? Where is that nurse with the plasma? It's too late. He's dead. Dead? How could he be dead? I haven't even taken his appendix out yet. Well, have somebody else fill out the death certificate. Next! years of taking off beat college courses in hopes of meeting someone were finally paying off. My nurse's training had already come in handy. Now I had a chance to use my basic aerodynamics. And underlying everything were three semesters of biology. Hey, how come I've never seen you around here before? Maybe you were too busy trying to read your letter. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Moose Myers. How'd you like to go out tonight? Get it on. Why wait for tonight? Hey, great! <laughs> I'm so attracted to you. I haven't been so attracted to an athlete since I saw Mark Spitz dry. <sighs> oh! 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 Moose! Moose! Do me a favor. I'm trying to. Moose, Moose. Moose, please. <laughs> Not here. I know just the place. The coach's office has got a big desk with a roll top. No. We can really be alone. No, 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 no. No. I know a place that's completely secluded where I can let loose. <laughs> <laughs> 